excuse us. No, pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Just move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. Okay, so, we got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. This shit better be good. Let's hope so. Shh. The movie's starting. Hello again, I'm Dustin Goes to Hollywood. And I'm going to be drinking during this episode. <laughs> and this is The Silver Lightings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest endings. And I am sorry. This it's movie's funny. fucking stupid. I want to go ahead and get that out there. I am sorry. Um, but this movie in particular, I've got a lot to talk about um, because... <sighs> I was somewhat there with with this movie. So, uh, if this is your first time tuning in, first of all, thank you for finding us. Thank you for giving us a chance. We are a podcast that likes to watch movies that end, like today's episode, in a not-too-upbeat, bright fashion. Um, Movies that leave you... Ah! (laughs) That was an unintentional pun, too. Movies that leave you wanting a little more that, you know, you might feel a little down after things are all said and done. Um, And we try to find the good in those things. Try to find the silver lining, something positive to take away from all the carnage. Uh, This week, we're talking about the uh, what-if superhero horror movie, Brightburn, from, uh, I think from last year, yep, from 2019. Boy, this movie. I feel movie. like this movie is so much older than that. Right? It, it feels like a 2016, 2017. Well, because I feel like... I don't it got know, swept I, like, under I, the rug. I, I followed James Gunn, who produced this. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of people think he directed it, which isn't true. He was... Very true. He produced it. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I feel like he was posting about this so long ago, like when they were shooting it. But yeah. I guess it really wasn't that long ago. I mean, 2020, we're halfway through. and 2020 feel, feels like a decade. Yeah, no <laughs> shit. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. This movie just didn't work for me. Like, good cast, you know, good good team. Uh, you know, interesting story idea, I guess. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. meh, big we'll old get... whopping meh. Yeah, we'll get into why or why not uh, this movie works. But so <clears throat> this movie is I, I've unfortunately have a vested interest in. Um, so when I first moved out here to Los Angeles, uh, my first job was at this trailer. Hey, house. audience, Dustin lives in L.A. If you're not aware, <laughs> this my first job, Los um, Angeles at this trailer house, City of um, Angels. <laughs> We did this collaboration with this company California. called California. <laughs> we did this collaboration with a company called the H Collective, which is one of the companies that produced this movie, uh, as well as a few others. Um, that and... sounds like a shittier Weapon X program. <laughs> well, it's it's a, a newish production company that has done some really big stuff overseas, and now are like getting into American films. Um, they produced that Aaron Paul movie, The Parts You Lose, which is a really good movie. Um, Didn't see it. seen it. Yeah. Uh, it, it's almost accidentally a very good sequel to El Camino, which was the sequel to Breaking Bad. Uh, but I highly recommend that movie. Um, anyways, so The Age Collective was going to do, I think it was six picture, uh, Pictures for American audiences, one of them being this movie with James Gunn. And I actually got to briefly meet him uh, when he came into uh, our our building because we were working on the trailer, uh, the first trailer that dropped for this movie. Um, so I, you know, passed him in the hallway, kind of gave him a smile and a nod, and he gave me one back. Much taller than I imagined him being. This dude is enormous. Um, but anyway, so follow that two weeks or so later we're wrapping up on getting the trailer going uh like to to get it finalized and this is right before comic-con of i guess last year or yeah or maybe even the year before i don't know we've had we've been working on we were working on this movie for a while anyways that's right right when 
Um, we were going to premiere it at Comic-Con, if I'm not mistaken. But that was right when the whole Disney fiasco happened with him. Um, like when, you know, the tweets resurfaced. and Oh, that's were... right. It literally happened the day we were going to premiere uh, the trailer for this movie at Comic-Con. And of course, we they scrapped the idea. It was just a it was a mess. Um, you know, whatever your feelings on James Gunn, I don't really care. Um, I, you know, the guy made mistakes. I think he's since paid for them. I don't think he's that big an asshole like as his older tweets may come off as. But yeah, I just remember like it, we were in a scramble. Like, what what do we do? <laughs> like, we have this trailer. We're sitting on this movie. Um, you know. And eventually, you know, obviously the movie does come out, gets decent acclaim for what it is. Um, I will talk about the trailer when we get to it. But yeah, just this movie has been sticking around with me for years, it feels like. Um, and it's unfortunate because I do think this movie's got some really good ideas for the most part. I think the the concept is, as a whole, just on a general standpoint, is a good idea for a movie. Um, but for some reason it just falls flat and I guess we'll get into that when we get into the movie, but Mally, what is your relationship like with this movie? I think this is your first time seeing it, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. First time seeing it. Um, I fucking had to sign up for a free trial for stars streaming service to watch this for this fucking episode. I think I did the same thing you did. Yeah. <laughs> like the Amazon Prime package or something like that yeah, with stars. I had, uh, yeah. <laughs> I literally signed like I literally like clicked like sign up through my Prime account, watch this mm-hmm. movie. As soon as the like as the movie rolled credits, I opened my phone and canceled the free Cancel. trial. <laughs> <laughs> well, just a little uh tidbit for you out there using free trials, just so you know, you can cancel the second you sign up and still you know, have the duration of what your trial would be, so you don't have to worry about uh, accidental uh, re-upping your subscription, because that's what I do every time I sign up for free trial. Yeah, apparently <laughs> I still have the free trial for another, like, week or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm probably not going to use it. Um, yeah. But anyway, yeah, like, again, I follow James Gunn on Twitter, um, or sorry, Twitter, I mean, yeah, Twitter, but also, like, Instagram. I, I think I follow Elizabeth Banks, um, couple other people in this movie, so, like, they were posting a bunch of stuff when they were shooting it, marketing it, and then, yeah, it disappeared once all that stuff with him happened. Yeah. Um, Because, I mean, he it's so crazy, because James Gunn is so active on social media, and then once that shit bullshit came out, he Just disappeared yeah. for months. Yeah. And then when, you know, it was all like, no, that was bullshit, like, he's back with Disney, he like jumped right back into social media like it never ever happened like it's crazy Um, i love too that like he's dipping his toes in the dc world with the suicide squad movie and disney is like letting him do that do his thing and then having him come back like it's weird the the whole transgression the whole timeline of that set of events is so it's such a small window but it feels like it was forever oh yeah it was only what a few months maybe and and he was dragged through the coals, man. Like, yeah. And again, not defending his past actions, but he had already apologized for that stuff, already paid his dues. Yeah, like when he first got hired for Guardians 1, that shit came up and he apologized mm-hmm. for it. It's like, why the fuck are you making him do this again? Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. Um. So, like, I was kind of curious about this movie. Um. But, like, honestly, because like, cause he was promoting the fuck out of it Um. then, but then once he came back, like since it had like he hadn't been really like he hadn't been around posting about it i kind of completely forgot about it Mm -hmm. until (laughs) you threw it on the list yeah um and a little behind the scenes this was a last minute replacement because up until about a week ago we were going to be doing a different movie this week totally different movie that i had a dustin (laughs) yeah dustin i get a text from dustin he's like hey so I know we were going to do Joker and then this, but I rewatched it and I don't think it qualifies anymore. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to change that. Yeah. And then like five minutes later, you're like, hey, we're going to do Brightburn. I was like, God damn it. (laughs) So I 
I guess we can go ahead and let it slip. My plan was to do Joker, a good clown movie, and follow that up with Killer Clowns from Outer Space, a bad clown movie. But for some reason in my head, I remember that movie ending a lot darker than it did. And then I rewatched it, you know, just a couple of days before we record this episode. And I'm like, oh, wait, shit, this doesn't work. That movie ends just <laughs> fine. So, so yeah, I was this... like, uh, we, we loosely tied it together with, okay, Joker's a comic book character, superhero, that kind of stuff. Well, so is Brightburn. And I know how that movie ends. So I have, it was funny. I hadn't actually fully seen this movie and only seen bits and pieces on it from what we were working on for the trailer. So I finally got to watch it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not a good movie. Um, That's not great. It's not. But there are some good things in it, I think. So we'll get there. Um, before we do that, we've already kind of briefly talked about it, but let's talk about uh, the making of uh, Brightburn. So yeah, the year's last year, 2019. The director is David Yoraveski. It's not James Gunn. Um, he's done a few things, not a whole lot from what I remember, but the writers were, um, the Gunn brothers, Brian Gunn, Mark Gunn, James Gunn, a lot of the guns. So he's, um, director, he's done a corn video. <laughs> um, and then like some little like, uh, tie in stuff to like Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, you know, even for this movie, he did a little like documentary short. So he's a fairly new director. Um, but the movie stars Elizabeth Banks, David Denman, he might remember as uh, Roy from The Office, uh, Jackson A. Dunn, Christian Finlayson, I don't know who that is, and uh, Emmy Hunter. So there's, there's kind of, there is a cast here, but also a lot of unknowns. Like, yeah, you got Elizabeth no, I mean, Banks. The, the cast is decent. Um, and Matt Baker. Yeah, this, this was shot, it was early, it was like March, like spring 2018. So mm-hmm. it was really a while ago. Yeah. Now, oh, not Matt Baker. I'm course. thinking Matt Jones. Steve Agee's in it for a little bit. I love Steve Agee. Uh, I like David Denman. Yeah. He's he's, he's pretty good in like, this. He's he's great in the office and he's um I actually highly recommend him in uh 13 hours. I actually did not see that when I skipped Dude, that one. It's actually pretty good. Like I threw it on, like oh, this is gonna be a stupid fucking Michael Bay movie with the guys from the office in it. It's actually it's not bad. Very strange like, that him and Krasinski are in that movie. Dude, and they're both like <laughs> fucking like I'm talking like Rambo 2 shredded in that movie. <laughs> like, dude, most of the male cast, which again, they play like ex Marine, like um, private military guys i don't know you were wow <laughs> yeah you took a took a while to get there i could um, i still can't think of the proper term but dude like soldier? They're, they're, well see they're not technically military they're privately hired okay. anyway but like dude, like they're like fucking yeah, yeah yeah like fucking just all fucking cut up <laughs> um that's well, this not movie... why the movie's awesome but it's good. <laughs> Highly recommend. David Denman's performance is fucking great in it. Krasinski fucking kills it. Um, also, uh, Breaking Bad. Uh, the guy that plays Gale. You know is what I'm he talking in about? This movie? No, he's in thirteen, he's in 13 hours. hours. Okay, <laughs> I was supposed to say, what the fuck? <laughs> Wouldn't that be fucking crazy? I was like, who the uh, fuck? But yeah, like, dude, like it. This movie has a good cast. Um, it just and it was shot actually. It was shot here in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Like just outside of Atlanta, like actually, I think the school they use in this is the same school from Stranger, Stranger Things. Things. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, which is so, I yeah, think it now was, gone. It I think. might be. I actually have no fucking idea. Yeah. Um, I live here and I don't know. I don't give a shit. <laughs> um, but yeah, like it was shot around here, like locally, and yeah, I don't know. It just <sighs> we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, this movie had a budget of six million dollars. Managed to gross thirty three million dollars worldwide. Um, currently, did this yeah, come it, out in theaters? It did. Oh, I thought it went straight to VOD. No, son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, and currently sits at a fifty seven percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Yep, that. Yep. Uh huh. It feels about right. Nailed so, it. So, if you're not familiar, why don't we watch one of the two trailers uh, that my old job did for Brightburn? And I do think this is a good trailer. 
but we'll talk about it when we're Oh, done. I'm going to drag this through the mud. <laughs> Let's watch it. Whatever you've done, I know there is good inside you. So that's the bumper. I probably should have skipped I that I fucking part. hate the teaser before the trailer. God damn it. Same here. Stock footage. That, stock that's footage. Georgia. That's this is Georgia. all stock footage, by the way. Oh. That's Georgia. <laughs> Who am I? You are a gift. Dude, literally up until I watched this movie, I thought that was old uh, the kid from Ozark and he plays uh, and, and the and he plays young Daredevil. I thought mm. that was him. You are different. It's not. This, this kid is in uh in game very briefly. Yeah, he plays, uh, isn't it like young, young Paul Rudd? Young Paul Rudd, yeah, yeah. During the time travel stuff. Right, right. Also, whose idea was it to give Elizabeth Banks purple extensions in that scene? <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know. fucking why? Someone listened. Like, and they didn't even try to make him look younger. No. We believe that you can I mean, neither Elizabeth, Elizabeth Banks or uh, Denman have aged. Like, true. ever. Barn. Did he find That's it? true. He's always looked 40. It was like yeah. he was drawn to it. And she still looks 32. <laughs> yep. He may look like us. He's not like us. I think this kid, and I hate to say it, might be one of the reasons why this movie doesn't work. Hey, shout out our boy Badger right there, though. Mm-hmm. I think it's a pretty good trailer, all things considered. Like, yeah, what the end result of this movie is. It's fine. Yeah. Um, you guys did a fine job. Get, given what we had, <laughs> what this movie is, yeah. Um. Okay, let's get into the movie, because I feel like we're, this is going to be a fairly short episode, I have, if I had to guess. Because I'm sure there's not a lot of... Anyway, um, there's there's not a lot of meat to <laughs> dig, sink our teeth into with this movie. No, this isn't going to be like last week. Yeah, this is going to be much shorter than last week. This so gonna I be, feel... if you've ever listened to our episode on the strangers, which is still our shortest episode. Yeah. Oh, we can beat that. Yeah, no, we can definitely beat that. <laughs> um, I feel like the concept. This movie is garbage, and so next week we're going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the concept of Superman gone bad. Is oh. great. Oh, that was the wrong drink. Oh. Um, I confused I mean, I feel myself. Like... I meant to take a drink of beer, and it was sparkling water. <laughs> Two <Okay>. very different <laughs> tastes. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm good. I, Thanks I for asking. I feel like the concept of a uh, Superman gone bad is great, but the concept's cool. It reminds me a lot of um, Superman Red Sun, mm -hmm. which is basically it's a great graphic novel um it's basically what would happen if instead of landing in kansas superman as a baby landed in communist russia mm -hmm. and it's fucking rad like superman grows up to be pretty much the head of the fucking soviet army um it's fucking great like it's a great alt take on superman um and then this is like a bad version of it yeah it's so it's essentially the same story. A uh, spacecraft with a young baby in it crashes into Kansas. Two family, uh, two family, two people raise them as part of their family, like he's their son. Uh, and around his teenage-ish years, he starts to show signs that he knows he's more than just human, pretty much. Like it's all there. Like it's the same right. setup. So. 
And I can't. What are we gonna say? Th- so there's a major, like, kind of. My biggest issue with this movie mm-hmm. is that because I love the concept. Concept's great. Interesting concept. Um, my issue is that the thing that makes the kid turn that is the ship is my biggest issue with the movie. Um, I think it would have been more interesting if it's kind of similar to Joker. Like, what happens if you push, like, you know, like, this would have been a great kind of study on, like, what happens when bullying goes too far. Like, the like kid, this kid gets picked on, blah, blah, blah. He discovers he has powers. And then, like, what happens when the kid that's fucking gets shit on and picked on all the time, what happens when that kid has the powers to fight back and goes on revenge. Like, I think Mm -hmm. that would have been interesting. But the fact that this movie's like, he's an alien, which, no issue with him being an alien, like, Superman was cool. But the fact that this kid's like, I should kill everyone because that ship told me to do it. Well, that's my issue. Because in one of these other cliches that happen to movies all the time is the lesson that the protagonist is learning in school has to directly relate to what is going to happen in the movie he's essentially a wasp like he's been sent there to do the wasp bidding because he mentions like oh you know wasp will tell one another to go do things for them like the head wasp will delegate pretty much and that's what he's doing so the ship that he came in is like I, I got to say the sound design too for the ship is terrible. Like this gargled. It's real bad. Yeah, like this devil voice in an alien language talking to him. Like it's almost better if they're going to go with this idea. Don't make it the ship. Make it just like once he hits puberty, like once he starts to, you know, go through what normal children go through through puberty, make it where oh, he's getting his laser eyes, he's getting his super strength, you know. Like, he's getting all this happening to him, and he doesn't understand. Like, when he breaks that girl's wrist, don't make it because he's being malicious to her. Make it because he's accidental. Like, he doesn't know his own strength, you know? Like, make him start to understand these powers. And Because by the end of the movie, he's fucking she's using his laser eyes. He's darting right, yeah. in and out of the house. He, he's Again, mastered. I, just, <laughs> I don't... They didn't dig deep enough into, like, the idea. Like it's like I actually read a review of this movie um, that is honestly it's kind of one of the things that kept me from ever actually watching it once Mm -hmm. it was out available to rent and stuff because I was like oh like I'm not gonna waste my time um, until you fucking made me watch it for this podcast (laughs) Um, but like literally the review was like um well there were two reviews one was it was like an elevator pitch stretched into 90 minutes. And yeah, the other that. was the premise of Brightburn is a great idea, and that's where the creativity stopped. Pretty much. I mean And I kind of, like I as harsh as those are, like I don't want to be overly like I know I started this podcast off by saying I'm drinking because this mar- this movie's such garbage, but like I don't I don't love hating movies. Excuse me. I don't love talking shit, but I kind of agree with those. Like this is such an interesting premise that they could have dug so much deeper into and they just kind of didn't. And yeah, like, they turn into a horror like, film. Like it's just a slasher flick basically. Yeah, which I mean, you know, that's that that could be cool like, you know, like yeah, I like in this kind in that kind of movie it's like, oh, like a Superman type character exists, but what if he's like evil or does bad shit? It's like, okay, like cool, but like Show me more of, like, I don't know, like, they just didn't dive deep into the psyche of that, and it, I think that's why, and plus just, like, the general, like, writing isn't great, like, the dialogue is so fucking hammy and bad. Yeah. I mean, Um, like, it could have, it could have been really interesting, but, like, it feels like they were like, oh, we have this really cool idea, but we're just gonna use it and just do a weird little horror B-movie. It's like, and they were like, they were happy with that. They're like, oh, we we have a six million dollar budget. Let's just go make like a hammy B movie. It's like you didn't have to do that. Like you, like you could have been a little more creative with the story, in my opinion. Like it yeah. feels like they shot a first draft. Yeah, no it it would work so much better if it's not 
Brandon is learning that his goal is to take over Earth. It would be so much better if it's Brandon realizing he's different, learning why he's different, how he, you know, when they finally tell him you came from space, you know, like letting that. And then, like you said, coupling, coupling it with the bullying and, you know, maybe don't maybe push this father character even a little further. Like he's a little unhinged throughout the movie. Whereas Elizabeth Banks is the, the you know, the nurturing, comforting mother, but push Brandon. And then you couple that with the self identity of I'm, from another world i'm not like these people i'm not even human and you know he's at the right age of like he's going through changes anyway like put all that together and make it that that's how you breed this villain like it's so easy to do (laughs) you don't have to oh i'm gonna be evil because i'm supposed to i will say i hate elizabeth banks's character in this movie so much well, like there were so many times where, like, when the dad's like, "Dude, like, he killed people. Like, he's a fuck. Like, we need to kill him. He's yes. not like he's an alien that's murdering people." She's like, "No, he's just a boy." And I'm like, but "No, what? No, yeah, Stu- yeah. She's stupid. She's too good of an actress to be playing a character this dumb. Like, yeah, <laughs> she gets <Yeah. laughs> she gets offended when um her husband points out." That he's not technically their son whenever they're having that fight in the bedroom. Yeah. And she's gets offended. I'm like, that's exactly what happened. You know that. <laughs> like, he's well, not dude, your and son. Like, the scene where, like, after he breaks the little girl's fucking hand. Mm-hmm. And, like, Elizabeth Banks gets mad at the other, at the little girl's mom. Yeah. And the mo- she, she, like, she makes a good point. What? She makes a good point, too. Like, do you even know who his real parents are, who his real mother is? She goes, I'm his real mother. I get it. As someone who who is adopted himself, I get the whole I'm his real parent. But you got kids. I, I, yeah. Shit. <laughs> and I every, that, every time you mention a child, I just assume you're talking about a cat. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do. I've, l- I've been to your house. Yeah. You've seen my son. Didn't realize it was yours. <laughs> just a kid that's just hanging out. Um, Dude, I don't know. You live in that L.A. life. <laughs> I'm not going to judge. It's interesting, though, too, that they decide to, like, they don't make uh, a case out of it. Like, oh, they're hiding that he was adopted. They straight up, the first scene with him and his dad, they're like, you know, when we adopted you, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, that's cool that they're not teasing this idea of, like, you know, we got to keep everything a secret from him. Um, it was, it's interesting though, that, you know, we don't know whether or not Brandon at this point has been like, okay, well, who are my real parents? Like, they haven't right. had that conversation yet. Um, but yeah, like it, it's weird to me that I'm siding. I, I always, David Dem and I just think of Roy from the office. So it's, it's weird that I'm siding with Roy in the, most of this movie. Like yeah, when they dude, go, like, he's the most rational motherfucker in this movie, which is oh, weird. Yeah. When when he goes on their hunting trip, I'm like, if this was me, if this, if I realized, okay, my quote unquote son, who's an alien being, who I have seen do miracles, like miraculous shit, uh, and I know he is got he he murdered, uh, Matt Jones's character, like I know he did, and. And I was like, if this is me, I would just take this kid out in the woods and put a bullet in his brain. <laughs> and that's exactly what he tries to do. I'll give him credit for that. But yeah, like the, it's it's weird that the, the most rational character in this movie is famous for playing an unrational character. <laughs> that's good acting, yeah. bro. <laughs> that's good acting, bro. Yeah. Well, speaking of which, let's... Did you ever watch um, the Adult Swim show, Harvey Birdman? Uh, a little bit, not a ton. I love the scene in this movie where he's The only trying... Adult Swim show I really got into is Frisky Dingo, which you know. Yes. Yeah, great show. Um, but I love the scene in this movie where uh, he's giving Brandon the talk, and he's like, you know, you're going to start having these feelings and blah, blah, blah. It, it, it just straight up reminded me of this scene from Harvey Birdman that I think is a pretty good analogy for exactly what he's going through. <laughs> oh, God. Enoch. <laughs> oh, get away from me, Dad. You don't understand. Peanut? Um, uh, hold on. 
There comes a time when every young superhero starts to get their special powers. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you know, Harvey? Not a lot. So I guess we're not going to need the banana and the condom. <laughs> so <laughs> this whole episode is this character, Peanut, oh, Jesus Christ. going through quote-unquote puberty, and it's him getting his superpowers, which I feel like is exactly what they should have done in this movie. But that conversation that they have in the woods is so fucking awkward and uncomfortable, it might as well have been... I'm just reading out of a fucking book. And especially when yeah. Brandon's like, oh, I'm supposed to do it now? You want me to touch my junk now? And David Dimmons like, what? No, no, no. <laughs> I did get a little laugh out of that scene, but it's just, it's so weird, this this movie. like. Oh, you have a weird relationship with pedophilia and stuff anyway, so. Okay, okay. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna do that. <sighs> What is this? Episode 93? I don't know. Hard Candy was like six. <laughs> ah, that anyway. shit comes back to bite you in the ass, man. Um, That's that's your old tweet right there, Mr. Gunn. <laughs> that's very true. Uh, which I have also apologized for. So there we go. Yeah, dude, I hope like a few years from now you're like dumb famous. Like you're like... <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're like you're nominated for an Oscar for like editing like a fucking like Nolan movie or something, and then my ass is gonna be sitting drunk at home just tweeting links to the Hard Candy episode. Like, <laughs> wait, till I wouldn't they even get be mad about this. that. Honestly, I wouldn't even be mad about that. That'd no, but your PR people would be fucking pissed. <laughs> That's very true. Um, uh so what else do we want to cover that, in this movie? I mean, that I think is my e that is my evil plan to take Dustin down. <laughs> <laughs> is to re release the Hard Candy episode that's already out in the world. Yeah, <laughs> and pray to God you get famous. Which, ah, <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> it's not a great plan. What what other um, aspects of the movie do you want to cover? Uh, the end. You want to just go <laughs> straight to the ending? <laughs> um. No, I mean the scene where uh the scene where he kills uh what's his name Noah? Yeah, uh, that Matt scene Jones. was that, that scene was kind of cool. Yeah, I got to say one thing I will fucking give them props for in this movie brutal is brutal as fuck. Yeah, the kills are pretty fucking cool in this movie. Not going to lie. Like uh his death and of course uh David Denman's death was fucking awesome. Even Elizabeth Banks uh her death is you know, we don't see the end result but it's pretty fucking cool. Like, what a way to go out. And then, of course, the sheriff exploding into just a red mist. It's fucking... Yeah, they did really good with the deaths. I will say that. I even like yeah. the, uh, the the deputy that he kills just out of focus in the background. Oh, <laughs> it's pretty yeah, funny. Yeah. But it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, dude. Noah's death is fucking brutal. Though. Like, the fucking uh, steering wheel to the face. And then yeah. he's just sitting there, like, literally laying on the ground, like, inside his fucking destroyed truck, trying to hold his fucking jaw on. Yeah. Oh. It's pretty good. It's pretty good effects, like I say. The, the money they spent on the budget for, like, the CG and everything and the special effects, yeah, they did a, they did really well on that. I think that's it, man. It's just the only th reason this movie doesn't hold together is the story. Like, the acting's okay. The special effects look great. The well, I don't know. Great. That... that that plane at the end looks a little rough. <laughs> okay, well, I don't want I don't want to jump to the ending yet, but yeah, well, I will talk about that plane because what the fuck? Um, yeah. Um, what else can we cover? I th I think Brandon's logo is pretty fucking dumb. <laughs> like, the thing dude, it reminds me of uh, like I'm sure you did this in middle school, but like what the was S? like the the S? Yeah. Yes, that's exactly what I wrote. Like, down. It just I was like, this fucking is... looks like that. <laughs> This is like middle school. This is like when you first learn to like Which, give yourself I mean, a logo or something. I guess it works because this kid's what, like 13? Yeah. If that. So, I mean, it works, but like every time they show it, it's so ominous. And I'm just like, I can't take that seriously. I'm it's, sorry. It's not a good, like it's, like, it's supposed to be an alien logo, I'm guessing. Like, like an alien. I um, know this kid is like I know it's a kid and he made it up and all this, but I'm like that's just fuck. I used to scribble that bullshit on my notebook in yeah, fucking it's, math. It's an like, angsty. It's a teenage angsty logo, and it's not good. Yeah, it's not like good. I've seen that logo on a T-shirt at Hot Topic. Probably, probably, and also probably Spencer's. Yeah, 
Well, speaking of that, um, Spencer's. You know, yeah, no. Speaking of Brandon's drawings and everything, I love that. Like we get the finding the porn under the mattress in this movie, but then it just yeah. Like, if you find out your son, your teenage son from another planet, <laughs> has photos of women's internal organs under his bed you got to toss the whole kid out and get another kid right like that's the that's the sign you need to get rid of that kid to take him out and old yeller him like <laughs> you can't be having that man i don't know maybe the bar is very low wow for me. i hope you never find porn <laughs> under your kid's mattress holy that's fuck. not porn i mean he had one photo of a woman in lingerie and then the rest was anatomical fucking by sections of women's organs and shit, man. You got to toss that kid out. That kid's Maybe done. he wants to be a doctor. Well, why is he keeping it like porn then under his bed? Because he knows how his parents would react. Speaking to of which, him. speaking of which, whenever he does find the uh, the ship and his mom tells him, you know, oh, you know, you were a blessing, blah, blah, blah. And he goes in the house and he just starts breaking all the picture frames. It was pretty hilarious to me because I just kept thinking about the scene in Hot Rod where he's breaking all the lamps specifically. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why, but yeah. He See, just... it made me think of the scene in Walk Hard where Dewey Cox goes into the bathroom and rips like seven different sinks out of the wall. Yes. Yeah. Very, <laughs> that's another good one, too. <laughs> um, it's like the yeah, moment man. it happens, like, oh, this is the comedy scene. Ha 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 ha. Yeah. I mean, ha, 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 ha. speaking of which, there is not a lot of good like even in your horror movie you got to have some kind of levity to it the only scene it's that not I, funny at all no th- there was only one intentional laugh that i got out of was when him right before noah's death and steve aging them are all playing pool and uh i don't remember what he said i, I think roy, roy from the office is like oh our, our son could be a monster and then Steve Ages says something. He goes, what? He broke that girl's fucking hand? <laughs> Which is the way he delivers out of the line. It was like, I got a good little chuckle out of that one. But yeah, it's not funny at all. Like, there's no... Other than like the unintentionally awkward, you know, sex talk scene. Like, there's, not, there's nothing to grab onto here to really ground you and make you enjoy. Like, even Brandon's bully, like, has to be the weakest bully... For a movie ever. Like, that kid is not threatening at all. (laughs) I think he mocks Brandon, like, twice, and that's it. Like, he just makes some snide comment. I don't know. I just, like, this bully sucks, man. (laughs) Um, I do, like, we talked about the the special effects and stuff. I do like some of the visual stuff, too. It's very simple, but I, I like when Brandon is in that little girl's room. And he like kind of like disappears into the curtains. I thought that was a pretty cool effect. Um, like so they get you like this scene. Of course, the little of course, girl's we all uh, we all know. <laughs> interesting, interesting. <laughs> but no, I think they do a lot with a little with things like that. And even when he does start flying around and like using his laser vision and stuff, one of my favorite shots in the movie is uh, when Elizabeth Banks is ru- like limping towards the barn. It's that wide shot, and then Brandon just bursts out of the house, and it's just floating there in the air. I thought that was a pretty great shot. Like, him flying, surprisingly, doesn't look half bad. It's just when he's just floating with that... Can we talk about the costume? The dumbass mask that he has to wear that... Just, <laughs> where does he get that? How did, what is that? What even is it supposed to be? I... <sighs> Like, somebody on Reddit said it was supposed to be, like, a, a wasp because of the the lesson that the teacher's teaching. It doesn't look like a wasp, really, to me. Yeah, I mean, I think that it looks like a bug, kind of, I guess. I guess. Oh, another pretty great funny scene is when, <laughs> when Matt Jones comes home at night and he's just brushing his teeth. And he hears the noise and goes in the closet. And Brandon's just standing there <laughs> with the mask on. Oh, uh, you like? Oh, like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That I got a good laugh out of that too because he's it's so funny. It's just standing there in the dark. Um, so does he kill? Does he kill uh, the Matt Jones's wife, the aunt? Because I think that's left ambiguous, right? Uh, I don't fucking remember. 
Well, like he goes, honest, you know, so he goes to see his aunt, who is also his counselor, which that's a, uh, you know, con- conflict of interest. Um, but he goes to their house and is like, oh, oh you fuck, sh-. that's a good point, actually. Yeah, of course. It is. <laughs> but he's, you know, the the, the aunt's like, uh, the sheriff came around asking about you. I have to tell him. And he's like, oh, you shouldn't do that. It'll be bad for you. And then like, there's like, it's in, I guess it's ambiguous whether or not he kills her, but. I know later on, like, oh, wait, no, she's at the hospital when uh, Matt Jones is in the hospital and eventually dies. So I guess he does. I guess the aunt is the only one left in this family. Jesus Christ, man. Um, I don't know. There's like I said, there's little things we could talk about, but nothing is really that interesting. I th- I can't believe that lawnmower was still working after he fucking punted it across the <laughs> across the field. I know, right? I was like, what the fuck? All right. Um, let's see. Is there anything else we didn't cover that you want to talk about? We, we can jump to the ending. Because like I said, I don't have too much that's let's really, go. really a jumping off point for anything. Uh, okay. So, yeah. Brandon kills his dad in a spectacular fucking fashion. I do, Like I said, yeah. I love that death. The, the laser eyes through the skull is pretty great. Um, Elizabeth Banks finally decides, oh, yeah, Brandon is a murderer. Um, she calls the police, the sheriff shows, uh, Brandon, it's almost like that scene from the boys of the, the flashlight character that just runs through that person and they just explode into just red powder, uh, kills yeah, the sheriff. It, it reminds me of when, uh, in the Watchmen, Zack Snyder version, when, uh, Dr. Manhattan just blasts yes. fucking people. Rorschach. Uh, specifically <laughs> Rorschach. Yeah. Spoilers. Yeah. Um, you know, and then. Elizabeth Banks realizes, oh, the ship was the only thing that ever hurt him because Brandon gets cut on the ship at one point. So she runs to the barn, tears a piece off, uh, finds the missing waitress, the mother of that little girl who he kills. That's a pretty good special effect, too. The, oh, the, fuck. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the fluorescent bulb in the eye. I do like him using the heat vision to to tear the, <laughs> the freezer door off. That was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, Elizabeth Banks goes, tears off a piece of the ship. And uh, tries confronting Brandon. Uh, you know, you'll always be my son. I still love you. Blah blah blah. Tries to kill him in the, by stabbing him in the back, almost like Carrie, like uh, when Carrie's mom tries to kill her. Uh, but Brandon, yeah, very <laughs> Brandon similar, catches that hand, realizes she's betraying him, and flies her up into the stratosphere and drops her to her death. Just uh, eats her down to the ground. Yeah, and so bizarre too that she still like. In her final moments before death, this guy that this kid that's about to murder her, she still like strokes his cheek. Like I'm all I get motherly love, but come on. Like I said, Elizabeth Banks is too good an actress to be playing this dumb a character. Like it's just it doesn't Well, work. I mean, apparently not. Yeah. <laughs> so Or or that paycheck was was hidden. So I no. It was a six million dollar budget. It wasn't yeah. that big. Yeah. Maybe it's one was, million just to Elizabeth Banks. <laughs> yeah, she was maybe working for scale. Um and then, then we get the plane. Which is the okay, it's, it's the most random fucking thing. So Brandon's up there in the sky. Drops his mom to her death. Yeah, having just yeeted his mother back to the ground. And uh, a plane comes through, and we just cut to black, and then we cut to plane wreckage. Like, uh, presumably, Brandon made the plane crash for whatever reason. I don't... This is my problem with this ending in this movie, and the movie in general, is there's no... Because he's evil, Dustin. But, okay, well, we'll get to it when we get to it. So, yeah, there's this wreckage, you know, we hear this news... Uh, news coverage of, oh, this plane crashed, X amount of people on board, all died, uh, only one survivor or one person seen alive at the scene, and it's Brandon. And they just show him eating a cookie, uh, sitting on the back of this ambulance, and we cut to black. So it's real, real fucking and, dumb. And then we get Probably Michael the- Rooker playing alex jones <laughs> playing alex jones probably the worst stinger scene i've ever seen in a movie probably my favorite this? part of this movie <laughs> what is this sh- so basically there's a stinger scene of michael rooker playing an alex jones type where i guess they're trying to set up a cinematic universe like variations on the justice league but as evil characters so like brandon's obviously yeah, they, i don't know if there's so much setting up as just poking fun at 
Yeah, very true. So like, like Brandon is Superman with a lasso. That, you know, choking people with rope. That's one Roman, obviously. Uh, half man, half amphibious creature. That's Aquaman, whatever. Um, just, it, it, I don't know. I, I thought this was I'm really missed fucking Missed opportunity. Stupid. They should have said like deranged mental patient dressed up as a rodent. That'd be pretty good. I was like, come on. The joke was right there, guys. <laughs> if you're going to do the, like, if you're going to do three of the four, at least fucking, you know, go for it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> like, it's a very, what we're in and out of this thing real quick. Um, but here's, Which, a- I wonder if this exists in the same universe as James Gunn's super. Funny you mentioned that because if you pay attention during that uh, stinger scene, you do see the Crimson Bolts logo as one of the people that oh Michael no Rooker's shit I didn't catch about. that yeah so essentially oh, that's Michael fucking awesome <laughs> essentially Michael Rooker is the Batman to this uh, Legion of Doom which I would love to see dude I fucking <laughs> wait Michael Rooker is the Batman oh no, I'm mean, sorry uh, uh, it's uh, uh, Rain Wilson as okay. Crimson Bolt yeah <laughs> which I mean I fucking love Super like that movie's fucking great that's a great movie um but yeah I would love to see Rain Wilson versus this kid. <laughs> oh my! I mean that that would be a two Weird second movie. long film. Yeah. No. I, so my again, I think the reason Th- that would be like last week when we were talking about Walking Phoenix's Joker yes. versus <laughs> any Batman. It would be the shortest movie of all time. Yeah. Um. So one of the reasons I think this doesn't work, and it's unfortunate for this actor, but I just don't like this kid as Brandon. And first of all, the name. Brandon Byers. It's like a. I get the alliteration. I get what they're going for. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. It's it's a play on you know Peter Parker, Clark Kent. Uh, even though that one's not really the same. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, well, just, I mean, Mar Mar Stan Lee and Marvel tended to do the alliteration more often. Yeah, Bruce Banner. Yeah, Wade Wilson. You know, which I guess is yeah. DC, but yeah. Anyway, what, um, Wade, what, Wade, Wade. Wilson? Sorry, that's never not mind. DC. Never mind. I never mind. I'm thinking of Deathstroke. <laughs> Fucking idiot. Uh, anyway, I, I just don't like this actor, if that's fair to say. Maybe I'll like him in other things, but I just Yeah, don't... he's 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 a little flat in this movie. Well, it's it's not this kid's fault, but he's got like a very punchable face with this character. <laughs> if you know So what I mean. do like, you. Yeah, I'd, I'm not denying that. But it's Why just... do you think we do this podcast remotely? If we did this in the same room, <laughs> God, I'd kill myself. <laughs> um We've also, done, like we haven't we haven't done an episode in person since like last year. Since and the village, we did the village. Yeah, I think. yeah. And that episode was rough because I was just like looking at you the whole time, just like God, <laughs> I want to punch him. And it sucked because I think when we were recording that episode, we were sharing a mic. Yeah, we had to share a mic. Yeah. So like we had to get close sometimes, and I was just like, oh, I'm gonna hit him. Hmm. So <clears throat> thank God we're two thousand miles away. You know. Uh, I am also very tired of Billy Eilish. Beat your ass, Billy Eilish is bad guy, which is the closing credit song for this movie. I remember hearing that song nonstop when we were working on this trailer because they were trying to find a way to tie it in for other stuff. But I'm fucking annoyed with this song. It doesn't fit just because the song's called Bad Guy. It doesn't fit at all with the tone of this movie. Oh, that's a Billy Eilish song. Mm-hmm. That was no, like her, know that. her big hit. Yeah. I again like I if I've heard Billie Eilish songs like I remember it was God it was just back in like January I was talking about how like I was like yeah dude I couldn't name a Billie Eilish song if you fucking played one right now like I couldn't tell you so like one of my friends put on like Billie Eilish and I was like I mean the production's good like it's not technically a bad song but like you know whatever so yeah like I never would have known that was a Billie Eilish song if you hadn't just told me. I I don't have a problem with her and her music. I just, I feel like they are forcing her really hard. Like, even at this last year's Oscars, she was, they every time they cut to the audience, she was in the reaction shots every single time. Oh, really? It was Dude, her bomb scene was cool, though. I did not like it. But then again, I didn't it, like... It was I better than that Sam Smith It was better one. than Sam Smith, but I just, I didn't like... I didn't like her song. Anyway, so let's break know. down we'll, this. We'll we'll see when the movie comes out. Yeah, because like um the Skyfall theme, soon. I didn't I didn't love the Skyfall theme when I first heard it. Oh, I loved it. Loved it when I first heard it. I thought it was um, fine. I was like, it's like it's a song, okay. 
But then I, still, I saw the I, but then I saw the movie and I was like, oh, that song worked. Oh, like okay. I'm this still one of the few people that like works. Jack White and Alicia Keys version too. I like that what song. Are, no, I like it too. A it's lot a very of people interesting hate that song. pairing. Yeah, I like it. I, I like it. it a lot. Um, um, so I'm very curious to hear Billie Eilish's theme in the context of the movie. Well, if it's like Sam Smith, it'll just be over the credit sequence and have nothing really to do with the tone of the yeah. movie. Yeah, <laughs> dude, you you heard that unreleased Radiohead Spectre theme though, right? Yeah, fucking awesome. Yeah. So let's let's break down this anyway, ending here. Anyway, bright burn. Let's break down this ending here because I got problems with it. So Brandon murders his uncle, uh, his dad, yep. the the sheriff, a police officer, and his mother, and. During that climax, he fucks up that house by flying through it and shit. Uh, and then, for whatever reason, just decides to make that plane crash, right? Like, it's kind of just out of nowhere that he decides to f- take out that plane. I get it. He's it's evil. because he's evil. Here's the problem I have with that, then. So, he... <sighs> Brandon is essentially unstoppable, right? Like, we, he's shown he that. He Bullets can't kill him, blah, blah, blah. Um, But he keeps insisting every time he kills somebody in this movie, really, he keeps doing this whole, who, me? I'm just a little kid angle, right? Like, he keeps playing up the, I I didn't do anything. But throughout the movie, the voices are telling him, take over Earth, pretty much. He doesn't need to put on this facade. Like, at the end of this movie, him just eating a cookie or whatever is fucking dumb. Like... Why doesn't he, if his whole plan is to take over Earth, he can just do that. He doesn't need to put on this act. And even still, that whole angle is moments away from being shattered by the result of this movie. Like, yeah, Brightburn, Kansas is going to be swarming with investigators and shit that are shifting through this plane debris. And with the deaths of the town sheriff, a police officer, both of Brandon's parents, and not to mention, like, all the unexplainable just devastation to their house, and the fucking spaceship that they're gonna find in the bard, you know, Brandon's definitely gonna be apprehended, interrogated, or at least be wanted for questioning. Like, this whole little kid act is is dumb. Like, I don't understand... Why he doesn't just go off and just take over Earth if that's his whole plan. And maybe always... he just wanted a free cookie. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I mean, you also, you know, people can just say, well, he'll just murder whoever gets in his way because he's unstoppable. That's, you know, his character. But then, I don't know. That's, I think the ending, just the last shot of him eating a cookie is just way too cutesy. And it doesn't make any sense. Why is he at this wreckage site? Like, he wasn't on the plane. Why is he there? I don't know. I just, it just, it's just dumb. It's just dumb and lazy, and they wanted, like, this cutesy ending, and it's supposed to feel ominous, like, oh, Brandon's just gonna blend in and just slowly take over Earth. Well, it's dumb. It's really dumb. I that The ending is a big part of why this movie doesn't work for me, but it's not the ultimate reason. It's just one really big, glaring error I have with the story, and... Oh, is there anything else we want to talk about before we get to silver linings? Not at all. Okay. Um, well, actually, before we do that, why don't we do prop cop? Okay, I guess. Is there anything that you want from this movie? Because I have one big one. Um, I don't know. I guess I'll take the sh- gun the dad has, I guess. The sniper rifle? Yeah. You know the gun that Matt Jones gives him for his birthday? That never comes into play, does it? No. That's not, not the that same I, gun no. that they use. So it's kind of like a Chekhov's gun that doesn't go off. Interesting. Yep. Anyway, my prop cop, it's very quick, but I want the painting that Elizabeth Banks is making of the cow. I don't remember where exact, in, exactly in the movie is, but she's painting this painting of just a cow. And then, like, the phone rings and she gets up and goes to it. I'm like, I want that fucking painting. <laughs> of course that's what you want, you weirdo. <laughs> well, that, what else am I fucking taking? His dumbass mask? Like, that's what a fair other, point. Like, yeah, no. Fuck that. Let's get into silver linings. So what do you got? Uh, Brandon's probably going to be successful in his mission to conquer Earth. <laughs> 
Wow. That's the exact opposite of what I have. <laughs> I mean, technically, he's the protagonist, I think. So, I think the you mom know. is supposed to be the protagonist. Oh. I mean, if I had to guess. Okay. <laughs> my my silver lining was going to be, the jig is going to be up pretty soon for Brandon. Like, there's too much evidence pointing to him being at least a murderer, if not a fucking goddamn alien. Yeah, so, but like, what's anyone going to do against him? I don't know. I mean, we don't know that he's invincible. We know that bullets don't work, but I mean, the ship is still there. I mean, that's that's the Superman thing. Kryptonite will bring him down, and the ship is his kryptonite, which is also kind of stupid that, that that's how it works in this movie. Anyway, um, yeah, I got I got nothing left. Um, let's get to pick me up movie alternatives. So movies, if, if Brightburn does not sit well with you, what's a movie people can watch afterwards that might put them in a better mood? Uh... Uh, literally anything else. <laughs> I, I love that I could feel just the minimal effort you did for this episode. <laughs> oh my god, so... Like, you probably yes. just finished watching this movie right before we recorded, didn't you? Oh, like, 30 minutes before. <laughs> 30 um, minutes before. Well, I think my choice will be enough to, uh rectify that Mally didn't have one i'm gonna say go back and watch good elizabeth banks in wet hot american summer because that movie nice. is fantastic and elizabeth banks is fantastic in it or if you want to watch the tv show too the tv show was great um in my defense i do actually have one yeah yeah well what is it it's another elizabeth banks movie Ooh, what do we, what do we got Power Rangers. I never saw that movie. It's, it's bad. It's rough, but it's fun. Cause I know it's, there's like Krispy Kreme plays a prominent part. Oh my god, <laughs> so much. The whole third act revolves around getting something underneath a Krispy Kreme store. Wow. I would I Dude, I just like seeing her in her Rita Repulsa costume. That was a pretty cool costume. Um she's I mean, she hams it up, which people were like, Oh, the movie's so bad. I'm like, do you guys remember the old TV show? Yeah. Like, it's not any book. There is a fucking badass moment though in the third act where they call on the Zords mm -hmm. and for a minute it plays the old school thing, like the oh, go, fuck go, yeah. Power Rangers and dude. It segues from that song into Power by Kanye West. Oh, I, I kind of want to see that now. Dude, <laughs> that it's, kind awesome. of, <laughs> it's kind of fucking brilliant. Like, it's, again, it's not a great movie, but it's kind of, like, it's dumb, but kind of enjoyable to watch. Like, I watched it, like, with a couple friends in theaters, and we just had a good old time. I, I might watch just that like, now. Just like, this is so fucking silly. <laughs> like, what? And All also, right. Brian Cranston is in it. Oh, fuck. I forgot he's in he that movie. He plays Zordon. Isn't Bill Hader in that movie, too? Doesn't Not he play... Not um, remember. I think he... Doesn't he, he do the voice of Alpha Alpha? Alpha oh, 5, yeah. whatever that it's, fucking it's thing's name is. It's... Yeah, is... No, wait. Sorry. Him and Ben Schwartz co-voiced... Did BB-8. Uh, BB-8. Yeah, hang on. I is thought Bill he did. in that? I thought he did the voice of the robot. I can't even remember what the name oh, of the robot fuck. is. Oh, fuck. Yeah, no, you're right. Bam. Oh my god, also, guess who else is in it? Mm. David Denman. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> well, shit. Fuck, well, that's I a good, completely forgot that. That's a that's good pick me a movie alternative, then. That's a good tie-in. Get both of them. Yeah. Alright, I think I already know the answer to this, but uh, do you recommend this movie? No. <laughs> I no, have to what? ask. <laughs> yeah, no, what? no, Don't... no, no, no. Silly boy. Um, it is way too self-serious. They don't have any fun in this movie. Um, if if you're really Which curious... Which is so funny, because like, like, when I first saw the trailer, I was like, okay, like James Gunn like kind of getting back into his Slither game? Like, okay. And this is not that. Yeah, this movie could have been so much fun, and it just wasn't. Um, but I would say, if you are just really It could have been a fun spiritual sequel to like Super and Slither. Mm-hmm. But, mm. yeah, no, I, it doesn't work. But if you are really just that curious, I would say just 
fast forward to all the deaths in the movie because all the deaths are pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> um, but that's that's really all that's here for you is maybe the special effects and the deaths. Like the acting's not that great, story's weak, ending's stupid. Yeah. Um, anything else before we wrap up for the week? Um, not off the top of my head. All no. Right. Well, that's Brightburn uh, from 2019. If you want more of the Silver Linings playlist, you can get us on any podcasting platform pretty much there is. Um, we ask that you please subscribe, rate, rank, all the fun stuff like that. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You just search for the Silver Linings playlist and you'll find us. Or hop over to our subreddit, reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. Now, as I said uh, last week, this was my two of two back-to-back episode so the next two up are mally's picks um and we'll we will be having a returning guest for both of them so Mally, oh do you, man do you have oh, a clue man. all i'm gonna say is that these next two episodes we're just going balls to the wall as far <laughs> as the level of bonk like just fucking bonkersness i'm excited because i love both of these movies. oh my god it's, it's gonna be fucking great. It might be our wildest back to back, like just two movies that are fucking insane, and we're doing them back to back. It might be our like, wildest two. Weeks. All I'm gonna say is that when I pitched this back to back series to Dustin, I'm pretty sure your response was, "Oh my god!" <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited because I love be both fun. of these. It's gonna be fun. All right. Well. Thank you uh, for listening, everyone. Please tune in next week where we're going balls to the wall crazy two weeks in a row. Um, it's just so I'm still so disappointed in this movie. Like I didn't have high expectations, but I I had some, and yeah, what a bummer. Yeah. Anyways, hopefully James Gunn bounces back, and this David, uh, this director, what's his name again? D- I don't know Vid- what the Yurovesky? director's name is. Yorovesky. Yeah, hopefully he uh he gets something better to do with this. So Yeah. Anyways, uh thank you for listening, everyone. And as always, Excelsior. Excelsior I guess. Excelsior. 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 Oh. Look it up. Oh.